It's the final week of the 2022 Texas high school football regular season and it all comes down to this. These are the picks. Welcome into the Picks, your guide to the Texas High School Football Weekend. My name is Greg Tepper of Dave Campbell's Texas Football and TexasFootball.com. Thank you so much for tuning into the end of the line. For a lot of teams across the state, football season ends this week. It's over, right? It's week 11, it's the regular season finale, and on Monday they're going to be putting away pads, blowing up basketballs, and thinking about what's next in the winter. But... For a number of teams, this week is the playoffs. In fact, there's 26 straight up, no frills attached, no tiebreakers, win and in, lose and go home playoff games across the state. Not to mention a ton of other games that could have massive playoff implications as to who's in, who's out, district championships on the line, seeds up for grabs, hosting playoff games. It all really does come down to this here in the final week of the regular season. There's massive games everywhere you look. Now... A quick caveat before we move forward. There is big weather that is supposed to roll through North Texas, parts of Central Texas, and East Texas on Friday night. We've already had a ton of games get moved from Friday up to Thursday to get ahead of the storm, but make sure that you know that all of these game times and locations are subject to change this week, especially right now. In any case, big games everywhere you look. We start in Hunt County. 7.30 p.m. Friday night at Memorial Stadium in Commerce. It's a 3A Division I slugfest between the Mineola Yellow Jackets and the Commerce Tigers. What are the keys to this matchup? Key number one, the Dawson Pendergrass experience. If you're unfamiliar with Mineola's do-it-all athlete, Dawson Pendergrass, you are really missing out. The leading rusher in the entire state of Texas is one of the most dynamic playmakers in the state. And actually, hold on, I wrote this down. This is my Dawson Pendergrass piece of paper, okay? 2,437 yards rushing, pretty good, 29 touchdowns on the ground, he's averaging 270 yards per game, 9.9 .9 yards per carry, pretty good, right? Hold on, I'm just getting started. He's thrown for five touchdown passes, he's caught a touchdown pass, he's run for seven two-point conversions, oh, and by the way, he's had two interceptions on defense, he's returned one of them for a touchdown. Yeah. Now, make no mistake, they've got some other big-time playmakers, guys like Adam Blaylock and Braden Alley, but Dawson Pendergrass, he's the straw that stirs the drink. He's going to be the best player on the field on Friday night. And with massive implications for the playoffs, can Dawson Pendergrass step up in a big way? Key number two, the Tigers' balance. We talk a lot about offensive balance, being able to run the ball and throw the ball at the same time. But I think that for Commerce, it is really starkly important that they are able to both establish the run and throw the ball effectively. Just look at what they've done this year. Go back to their loss against Leonard. That was their season-high passing for them. But they lost the game because of their season low rushing, right? Last week against Pottsboro, they had a season high in rushing. But they had a season low in passing, and they lost the game. Every other game in the middle, they've won those games where they've been able to throw the ball and run the ball with quarterback Michael Orso and their running back Deshaun Jackson. They're going to need both of those guys to step up on Friday night. So can the Tigers achieve that offensive balance that's so important to them? And key number three, win or go home. Maybe you're asking yourself, Mineola and Commerce, why is he profiling Mineola and Commerce? I'm not here to tell you that this is the best game of the week. What I am here to tell you is this is one of the most important games of the week because this is straight up, no strings attached, a playoff game. The winner of this game is the number four seed in District 5-3A Division I. They are almost certainly going to face Jefferson in the first round of the playoffs next week. They survive another week. The loser of this game, season's over. That's it. It's done. That's what's on the line here. The stakes could not be higher for Mineola and for Commerce. Mineola is looking for their 11th playoff appearance in the last 13 seasons, while for Commerce, this would be their first playoff appearance since 2019. And we hear this all the time. Oh, too many teams make the playoffs. It doesn't mean anything to them anymore. Go tell that to these two teams playing on Friday night because it means a lot to them. This is a huge game with everything on the line. So, who handles that moment better? Who am I picking? 
I'm going with Mineola. I think the Yellow Jackets grabbed that final playoff spot thanks in large part to that dude, Dawson Pendergrass, who is one of the most dynamic playmakers in the state of Texas. When in doubt, you go with the team with the single individual best playmaker. That is Dawson Pendergrass. Now, I think Commerce has the better defense. I think they're going to have a way to maybe contain this offense for Mineola. And I do have my concerns about the Mineola defense. But in the end, I think the Yellow Jackets get the win. I think the Yellow Jackets survive in advance. Give me Mineola. 7.30 p.m. Thursday night at Leopard Stadium in Lucas. The District 7-5A Division II Championship will be decided as the Melissa Cardinals visit the Lovejoy Leopards. Uh, this game started off scheduled for Thursday, got moved to Friday, then got moved back to Thursday. So... It's been a week for these guys. Lovejoy's back into the state rankings after dropping two non-district games, and their offense has really hit their stride since then, albeit against, I think, weaker opposition, but still wins are wins. Quarterback Braden Hagel has been fantastic, and they have one of the best wide receiver cores in America, right, with Kyle Parker, Parker Livingstone, and Jackson Lavender. They are deep and dangerous on the offensive side. I really like what Melissa has been able to do offensively, followed a similar path, top, dropped two tough non-district games before getting in district play and really starting to roll. Quarterback Trevor Ham has been really good. They're able to run the ball pretty effectively as well. My question is, which defense is ready for this challenge, right? Both offenses are rolling, and also neither of these defenses has faced an offense even close to what they're going to see on Thursday night. That's what makes this interesting. Which of these defenses is able to get back up to speed in a hurry, just in time to win a district championship, and just in time for the playoffs? I think this game is going to be high scoring and really fun, but I do think that Lovejoy gets the win. 7 o'clock Friday night at Forest Field in Hawley. The 4-2A Division I championship is up for grabs as the Cisco Lobos visit the Hawley Bearcats. Remember, this is a rematch of a regional final game last year where Hawley won a close one in route to their eventual state runner-up finish. You know, for Cisco, they have been humming along. Quarterback Hunter Long has been there for what feels like 700 years of eligibility, and he runs this run-based offense for Cisco so well. He knows this offense like the back of his hand and that is a real advantage for them. Their offense has been great and their defense has really turned it on of late as well. For Hawley, I really think they've taken a step from last year's run to a state championship game. Austin Compton is back healthy running the ball, but I think the big difference for them is that quarterback Rody Hooper has really stepped up and they are a legit passing threat this year. They are really strong on the outside with guys like Kaysen O'Shields uh, and Deontay Ramon. I think this team has an opportunity to make it back to AT&T Stadium, but first things first is winning a district championship championship. I think this game is close once again, but I think that the defense comes through for Hawley, giving the Bearcats. And 7.30 p.m. Thursday night at R.E. St. John Memorial Stadium in Kilgore. It is a district championship game out east as the Tyler Chapel Hill Bulldogs take on the Kilgore Bulldogs. This is a rematch of a playoff game last year, which went into double overtime, and I would expect nothing less from these two Titans. They followed a similar script this year. Uh, Tyler Chapel Hill dropped their first two games out of the shoot, and I think a lot of people jumped off the bandwagon. But that young team has really grown up since then. Demetrius Brisbane, their sophomore quarterback, and their sophomore running back, Ricky Stewart, have been very, very good. That offense is flying right now. They are as advertised. Going up against this Kilgore team, which also dropped two games early, but their quarterback, Demarion Van Zant, is one of the most exciting dual-threat quarterbacks in the state that nobody's talking about. This kid is awesome. He has been fantastic all year long. I do think that the Kilgore defense has been more consistent in this one, but what happens when they go up against this high-powered Chapel Hill offense? Uh, how far is this Chapel Hill defense come? Because it's going to be a big challenge for them. I think it's going to be fun. I think there's going to be fireworks all over the place. I give the slight edge to Chapel Hill. But those are far from the only big games in the final week of the 2022 Texas high school football regular season. Let's get to the lightning round. I like San Antonio Reagan over San Antonio Brandeis. Give me Smithson Valley over Seguin. And Mount Vernon beats Pottsboro. Sabinall finishes off their first perfect regular season since 1929 with a win over Rock Springs. I like Chilton over Milano. And give me West Rusk to take down Edgewood. I like El Paso Eastwood over El Paso East. Like give me San Antonio Wagner over New Braunfels Canyon. And Frisco Emerson's dream season continues with a win over Frisco Independence. Huge games in Southeast Texas this week. I like Newton over New Waverly. Give me Silsby in a close one over Jasper. And Refurio beats Ganado.
I like Tidehaven over Van Vleck. Give me El Paso Del Valle over El Paso Bel Air. And give me Wichita Falls Hershey over Midland Greenwood. Give me Midlothian over Red Oak. Stephenville bounces back with a win over Waco La Vega. And give me Love Lady over Deweyville. I like Abernathy over Cahoma. Freer beats La Villa. And Bernie finishes off the perfect regular season with a win over Fredericksburg. I like Toller over San Saba. Midlothian Heritage beats Everman in a matchup of state-ranked foes. And give me San Benito over Westlaco. I like Timpson over Garrison. Sonora over Forsan. And give me Panhandle to beat Farwell. I'm going with Wellington over Clarendon. And give me Gregory Portland over Corpus Christi Flower Bluff. And it's a big rivalry game in Abilene. I like Wiley over Cooper. I like Umble Atascacita over Umble Summer Creek. Give me Fort Bend Marshall over Dayton. And in that wild and wooly District 25-6A, I like Round Rock over Cedar Park Vista Ridge. Georgetown beats Cedar Park. Centerville beats Corrigan Camden. And Lancaster topples Lufkin. I'm riding the hot hand with Fullshear over Richmond Foster. Give me Anna to beat Sulphur Springs. And Edinburgh Vela beats McAllen Rowe. In the Little Southwest Conference, I like Odessa Permian over Midland. And give me Holiday to beat Kalisburg. PSJA North finishes a perfect season with a win over Rio Grande City. And I like Childress over Friona. And it's a massive final week in the six-man ranks. I like Balmeray over Sanderson. Give me Rankin over Garden City. I'm going with Zeb Zephyr over Blanket, and Whit Harrell beats Amherst. And those are the picks. What am I wrong about? Which games did I leave out? Leave comments down below. Don't forget that subscribe button. Follow us on Twitter at DCTF. Like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Dave Campbells. Follow us on Instagram, instagram.com slash Dave Campbells. And of course, see us at texasfootball.com, where you can find complete coverage of the 2022 Texas High School Football Playoffs at texasfootball.com slash playoffs. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the final week of the Texas High School Football regular season. We'll see you.